Continuing with our discussion on Mars, with all the hype around traveling to this red planet, now tickets being sold to travel there, and university is already gearing up to teach uh, survival courses. Is it indeed inhabitable, inhabitable for humans? And uh, what challenges could we face? Now, still with us in studio is the director of the Shallow Sky section of the Astronomy Society of South Africa, Clyde Forster. Now, Clyde, I just want to ask you, you know, humans may suffer from space radiation and other uh, problems. Um, what problems do you foresee happening with this? Certainly radiation is a, will be a major issue on, on Mars. Uh, the radiation levels, I think, have been measured at two and a half times that that is experienced in the International Space Station, mm -hmm. where obviously we've, we've had um, experience of, of that exposure. Um, so the habitat that um, the astronauts will have to, or the first Martians, if we can call them that, um, will have to uh, deal with, uh, will have to be a controlled environment. Mm. Um, so structures, uh, suitable structures that protect them from the radiation, protect them from the cold, uh, protect them from the dust storms, um, will, will have to be placed on Mars. Would we have to live underground, maybe? That, that is certainly a, a number of the, um, the programs um, are looking at underground um, caverns mm -hmm. and in fact on the uh, volcanic plateau that I mentioned earlier, the Tharsis pl plateau, mm -hmm. there's already been caverns identified and what they call lava tubes which are basically open, open channels underground mm -hmm. as well uh, where lava used to, to run and those are certainly being looked at. Um, that, that would certainly assist with protection from radiation. Now, how important is the timing of this mission to send uh, astronauts to Mars? Uh, surely that they would have to think about the orbit of Mars and, uh, Mars and Earth, and the timing must be incredibly important. F funnily enough, I, I don't think it's that critical. Um, one of the key elements will be the, uh, the technology that's used to get the, um, the, the Martians there. Mm. Um, and it, it's quite interesting if you, if you do a little bit of reading, um, currently, ExoMars took um, approximately seven months mm. to get to, um, to, to the planet, um, and that coincided with a fairly close approach of Earth and Mars. However, uh, they are exploring technologies that could get us there a, an awful lot quicker. Well, on that issue of timing, now, m a year on Mars is said to be 687 days. How is this going to affect um, the astronauts on Mars, and especially in com uh, comparison to Earth, are we going to lose time or gain time when we're there? Well, we're probably going to die a lot younger <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with Mars' year being mm -hmm. uh, nearly twice the length of, of an Earth year. Mm -hmm. um, one of the pluses is, is the fact that, the, interestingly enough, the, the, the Mars day is only 40 minutes longer than mm -hmm. an Earth day. So from that perspective, it's, it's, it's a perfect match, and we are used to that time frame. I think the year is not a major issue. Obviously, the, the seasons will be almost twice as, as long, mm -hmm. but they, they're going to be living in a, in a controlled habitat environment. Um, so that will not be a, a major factor. The fact that they're going to measure um, life in terms of a Mars, Martian mm -hmm. day, which we call a sol, and, um, and a Martian year, which will be twice, or nearly twice as long as an Earth year. I don't think it's a, it's a major issue. Just an interesting point is that the, the team that is controlling the current U Curiosity rover on, mm. on Mars in Gale Crater um, is actually operating on Mars time. Okay. So they sleep and work on a, on a Mars day, a Sol, um, to be able to control and work in with the operation of the rover on Mars. Now, in terms of survival, um, there's been talk of turning garbage into gas, growing crops, because we can take seeds up there, they're small enough, and uh, even mining. Um, what do you make of this? Is this possible? Every resource that is available on Mars will have to be utilized to the, the full extent. And, and with the renewable energy um, technology development that we've had over, over these years on, on Earth, it's, it's almost primed us. To, to utilize everything that we can on Mars. But as I, as I mentioned to, to Evan a little bit earlier, we will have to take resources initially, mm -hmm. um, but certainly once we're there and a colony has been established, to utilize the mineral resources, utilize the CO2 atmosphere, 
utilize the water that is there, we, we're going to have to make the most of it. So it is possible for humans to inhabit Mars? I believe so. I believe it uh, can be done. It's uh, the new frontier uh, for, for man. Um, what we do with the planet when we get there is, a, is another question. Mm -hmm. And obviously that brings a lot of moral, ethical, uh, physiological, social issues to the table. But I think that's, that's for another discussion maybe. Well, thank you so much for joining us and educating us on the planet Mars. Maybe our future home, we never know. Well, that is um, Clyde Foster. From the he's the director of the Shallow Sky section of the Astronomy Society of South Africa. Now, let's go over to Eben.